Okay. Hey, yeah. Aaron. Is that hey. good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, firstly, Aaron, welcome to the, the Zildjian Talk Show and welcome to the Zildjian India page. And thank you so much for uh, ex- expecting our uh, invite at a very last minute thing. Uh, hey, we man, really, we point. really appreciate uh, the time that you've taken out for us. No worries, man. My, yeah. my pleasure. Any, anything for you guys, man. Much love. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so tell us, Aaron, uh, how how are things back in DC, and how are you coping up with this whole lockdown? And I'm sure all your concerts with uh, the upcoming tours and stuff must be on standby, like it, it's on hold right now. How how's it working? Yeah. So so. <laughs> As far as like you know concerts or um, uh, you know gigs and things like that, everything pretty much is shut down. Okay. Um, there's absolutely, I mean, there's nothing, nothing happening, right. nothing going on whatsoever. Right. Um, right. You know, I had a, a few things that I'm supposed to do um, here, you know, here in the states, but then also abroad, and just okay. one thing after another. Just you know, everything is just kind of kind of sit down and put on pause Mm -hmm. or hold or, you know, to try to postpone things or try to figure out, you know, how to make things happen for the future. But just right now during this time, man, it's like everything is just shut down. Um, So as far as, as far as like how things are um, here, it's for me, it's it's totally, it's it's cool. I'm I'm at home, you know, with my family and, you know, instead of focusing on, you know, the negative things, man. It's like I'm just focused on the positive and enjoying my time with them, with my wife, with my son. I mean, it's just, it's cool, man. Totally cool. Yeah. Do you have some kind of a practice routine going on for these days right now? Are you working on something? <laughs> man, I, it's funny because I wish that I was, I wish that I was able to play and practice more, um, you know, but it's it's kind of tough with having everyone here at the house. You know, my, my right. wife, she's, she's a teacher. So okay. she has she has lessons that she has to teach um, every okay. day with her students. So that, right. that, that doesn't work out, you know, for her to teach and, and me to be practicing my best, you know, right. six, eight composition. You know, it's just it just it, it doesn't it doesn't work. You know, that right. and also my attention right now has been so focused on um, my son. Like I'm really doing um, a lot of I'm kind of handling his, you know, his teaching. You know, he gets right. like a, a packet from his school every week. And then what I do is, you know, make sure that he's doing his classwork, make sure he's doing his homework, preparing right. for his test, you know. so I saw like, some um, stuff on the story yesterday that you posted about some art stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that was one of his one of his projects. You know, right. like we had to um, go outside and find something in nature and, and try to make a picture of it. So. You know, we just, just you know, we just trying to carry on with with life the way it's supposed to be. You know, it's so cool. So, yeah, man. So, uh, going back uh, in in you know, going back in time, uh, tell us some more about your upbringing in the. Like, I know that your love for music began at the the Pentecostal Church in DC, and yeah. uh, you performed at the age of five, uh, like like a performance thing at the age of five, and then. Like, what were your uh, your inspirations, your mentors when you were you were growing up, and like, how did you uh, where did you learn drumming from, in the basics? So for me, um, like like you you said, I, I grew up playing in church. So my first musical, um, I guess my first musical, uh, you know, situations it happened that in church for me. Um, right. You know, um, I was able to. You know, at a young age, I, I want to say my parents tell me that I was I was younger. You know, they always say like, "Oh man, you were, you know, I don't know, two or three when you first started playing." And you wow. know, I, I think that's just just kind of banging on stuff or just trying to get sounds and tones and things like that. Right. Um, right. But like the first time that I remember actually playing, I was around maybe five or six, and okay. uh, that was in 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 a church setting. Um, okay. You know, church was cool because we had, um, you know, bass, you had drums, you had like organ or, or a keyboard. Back then it right. was it was organ, um, you know, we had an organist. So if we didn't have a bass player, the organist would be able to kind of keep, you know, the bottom with his, uh, with his pedals, which right. was cool. Um, right. But that was kind of how things all started for me. Okay. Um, I, I don't, 
my early inspirations were guys that were playing in church. You know, these were the guys okay. that I saw on the regular. You know, these dudes were people that, um, you know, were playing week after week, you know, either at my church or they were playing at, you know, churches in the area that I would be able to kind of check out and see. Right. Um, you know, going from there, then it was the guys that I was able to listen to on records. Um, right. So it's really cool to be able to check out, you know, so many different artists, um, you know, via cassette tape at that time. Right. <laughs> you know, um, you know, my parents were really good at, about making sure that I had um, good music. They were very, very watchful at first. Right. Um, you know, they just didn't want me what, to Were have... they in music as well? Like, were, uh, were they in music in, so, in some way? Like, in, like, learning an instrument or yeah, uh, singing well, my, my my dad, he sang. Um, okay. My dad, to to this day, man, it's crazy. He's still he's a he's a he's a good singer. Um, wow. And it's okay. it's so funny because because as a as a kid, I would um he would sing at different weddings and things, you know. Right. And I would be his drummer. Like I would go with him. Nice. And his, his keyboard player, and we would definitely go. And um, you know, he would sing at the wedding, and I would play "Ribbon in the Sky" by Stevie okay. Wonder. Like that was yes. like his. That was like the song. So I mean, I, I think I, I got that song down pretty much from playing that as a kid, you know. Um, Ooh, man. But that was he was he was the musical one in my in my family. My mom, she sang in the choir, you know. But okay, my my dad was really a singer, and he also played some percussion. He didn't play drums as much, but he really played like um, you know bongos and congos and right, you know percussion right. instruments and things like so that. So it's there. It was there in the family, and that's why it's you know somehow it uh, you know got you as well into music and that uh, you know playing in the church. I think obviously made a a, a big difference to your yeah, uh, musicality, sure. especially. Yeah. Huge, cool. I, huge, I've also heard about uh, your your Zildjian day in New York, something that you saw and uh, you you got inspired by Winnie. Utah and Alex Acuna, is that true as well? Like, yeah, very much so. So yeah. for, for me, obviously, my, my early influence is definitely was church. Um, right. But, you know, growing up, you know, as, as you continue to grow and you you look for different things and you're, you're you know, trying to evolve, uh, that was definitely the Zildjian Day in New York was one yes. of the first videotapes that I saw. Um, okay. You know, and this tape, it, it blew me away because it was like, the, the guys that were playing, you know, like I said, Benny, um, Alex Acuna, um, right. Steve Gadd, uh, wow. Tommy Campbell, like these guys, yes. you know, were just playing at a, a level that I had never, ever even See, imagined, yeah. you know, you know, church, church really was more so about really locking in and playing the parts and kind of staying yes. Um, you know, like really, really serving the music, really playing the music. It wasn't, you never saw any solos, you never saw any crazy, ridiculous feels and expressions, right. and it just wasn't that. So when I actually saw um, this video, dude, it blew me away, because I was like, I didn't even know that right. you could play like that. Uh, the very <laughs> first time I had ever heard someone play in our time was me. Right. Really? You know, so okay. it's just like, holy smokes, this is a whole new way of, of playing. And that really, really got me, you know, kind of hyped and excited, you know. Right. So uh, did you like prefer, like teach drumming from a particular teacher? Or it was always watching through videos or it's just about playing in, in the church and like, you know, learning on the on the road itself? Yeah, for me, it was always, um, always learned from, you know, from different videos I would okay. literally go to the music store maybe once a month and I okay. would go and, and check out whatever new videos that they had, you know, like DCI, you know, yes. before they were, before they were Hudson, you know, it was right. DCI and yes, I would go I and I would that. check them out. Um, I would see whatever videos they had. So, you know, from the um, Zildjian Day to the, um, uh, Dennis Chambers to Dave Weckl yeah. to Omar Akeem, um, you know, then the burden for Buddy Rich, those videos, you know, yes. with, um, Louis Belson, you know, Dennis, Greg Bissonnette, um, Benny, uh, Steve right. Dad, Dave Weckl, you know, so like, I'm just at this point, man, I'm just super hungry 
for whatever yes. is, is happening drumming wise. And those videos were a great tool. I never had a I never had like a um no, that's that's not true. I did have I had a teacher, my mom thought, you know, because I was really interested in drums, my mom thought it would be good for me to have a teacher. And okay. I did have one for like maybe two weeks. For two and weeks. Yeah, well <laughs> because I I decided I decided to, to leave just because um I don't know. I, I guess at that time, you know, it starts off so slow. It starts off with, you know, your yes. singles, and then you start with your double, and then you get in the pair and then you, get into, <laughs> you know, six stroke roll, and then you get. So it's like the stuff that he was showing me. I was telling my mom, like, "Mom, this is a waste of money. This is a waste of time. Right. I know this stuff. Man, this dude is terrible." Right. Um, and I ended up, I ended up leaving, you know, I ended up, ended up, leaving, but, but my, my teacher for the most part was just, um, just experience and also watching and listening and trying to mimic and do the things that I had, you know, that I was listening to or that I heard. There's right. a lot of that. Cool. Uh, so tell us about your first band, like uh, your first band performance. When did that happen and how, how were you part of the band and how did that all work now? Was it called Butt Sweat by any chance? <laughs> uh, well, that was, <laughs> that was so terrible. Um, <laughs> this was this was in like like middle school. Um, here in D.C., right. Go-Go, is a, Go-Go is such a huge part of the culture here. Um, Google okay. is such a such a vibe, and the guys that play, um, you know, like in the Gogo bands here that kind of have that that swing, um, right? Th- they are they're artists, man. Like they really, really, it's it's a it's such a vibe and such a culture, and it's not something that that to me anybody just can hop on and just play. Like it's really, right. it's really a vibe and a feel. Um, so in middle school. Um, I did join um, this band. Um, okay. We put a band together, and it was just a, a bunch of bunch of kids just trying to be like our favorite, um, be like our favorite Google artist, you know. Right. And we we didn't have a name. Um, we played a, a talent show, and and in the talent show, we decided, you know, that that was going to be our name, Butt Sweat. It's going to be <laughs> terrible because we. We said we wanted to make the people butt sweat, so we, we called us. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, that was it. Yeah, got it. We, you know, we want people to dance, and dance so crazy that you know that their butt will sweat. So anyway, that's definitely wow. weird and embarrassing, but it's okay. I don't mind sharing with you guys. This is a circle <laughs> of trust. Yeah. Oh boy. So, uh, also after I think high school, you were doing like a nine to five job, uh, if I'm not wrong, at an IT consultancy firm, like something like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, so well, after how after, did you manage like just the the drumming part of it and uh, you know the to doing a job back to back like that? Ah, uh, so so for me, um. I wasn't working professionally as a musician. Um, so okay. I definitely had to figure out what it was that I needed to do in order to, you know, just to take care of myself. Um, so right. I had a few different jobs, man. I, I had worked. Uh, which was terrible because I that I'm not really a, a suit guy. Yeah, um, I think. But you know, but I Okay. I worked construction. Uh, my yeah. father is a carpenter and um, you know, he worked these big construction gigs and I, I spent some time working with him. Right. Um and then I realized that wasn't for me. So um I really loved computers and I had a friend that um I had a friend named uh, Anand Bao that actually worked in this uh, like this computer coding company, and um, she kind of took me under her wing and started showing me the ropes and uh, showing me how to kind of work in that field. And then from there, um, I moved on and went to this uh, this company called IQ Solutions, which okay. I was able to 
Um, worked there as a as a consultant, and I, basically, basically what my job was, you know, I, I opened up different parameters for people to be able to access parts of the the internet in this particular mainframe. Um, I also installed um, programs on people's computers. Like that was really what my gig was. Nice. And um, I did okay. that for. I did that for a while and until I got the call um, until I got the call for Usher. Right. Um, you know, but during that time, man, like I was playing with my band here, uh, the Gideon band, which is a gospel right. band. I was playing with them. Yes. And then also whatever other gigs that I had, um, you know, kind of on the side, um, I would go to work in the morning. Okay. And then at night or on the weekends, mostly weekends, then I would, you know, I would play. And that's just kind of how I, I managed to balance everything. Um, okay. That's just kind of how it, how it worked out for me. So how is the experience, uh, firstly, auditioning for Asher? Because I, I, I've heard that there were a lot of drummers uh, who did the audition and then they finally select you. So how was the whole process of, you know, auditioning for something like such a big artist and, you know, getting, what was your frame of mind and how did you get ready for that kind of an audition? Uh, so for for me, uh, with that, it, it was it was not as hard as um, I, I guess, or as intimidating as it would sound, um, just because of the way that they did it. You know, they didn't do right. like a huge um, cattle call where they had everybody, um, you know, come in at the same time and play. Uh, for okay. me, what they what they did for this particular audition was they asked right. everyone that was interested. Uh, to send in a videotape of them playing. Okay. Uh, so, you know, all around, you know, the country. Uh, <laughs> uh, good morning, Governor. Um, all around the country, you know, they are, you know, asking people to submit these tapes. Right. And for me, I, um, I just, you know, went into a studio. A good friend of mine helped me out, you know, so much. Cause the drums that I had at the time, um, I, I want to say I, I had like a a Tama Swing Star or something like that. Wow! And the drums, the drums weren't so they weren't so sweet. You know, they yeah. were they were they <laughs> were know. they were great. Yeah, they were great because I mean that's what I had. Um, right. But a good friend of mine from here, uh, named uh, Paul Edwards, who call him Buggy, was like, "Man, okay. you gotta if you're gonna take you're gonna do an audition, man, you gotta make sure your drums are right." You know, so come and, and and take these, borrow these drums, and he let me borrow like his nice. top of the line Tam or whatever it is that he. Uh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was like a Imperial Star or something like that. It was, I mean, it was the nicest kit that I had had you know ever played on at that time. Uh, so he right. let me borrow that, and um, I submitted a videotape, and because of because of the. Um, the tape that I submitted, you know, they selected me to be his drummer. But that really kind of helped right. to take the edge off. Like, I think if I was in, uh, like, a cattle call audition with everybody else, um, I don't know how things would be. I don't know how I would, how I would okay. if I would have been, like, super nervous or scared or, or what. I don't know. Right. But right. Um, right. it worked out pretty cool. So you had to, like, play his material? Like, uh, how many songs did you submit, like? How was the process of submitting? Yeah, stuff? so they they asked for like um, like I want to say maybe three songs. Um, okay. So they I can't remember if they let me choose the songs or if they said I can't remember if they said for me to um, select the songs or if they selected the songs. I can't Something remember. Something for you, okay, okay. But um, but I, I ended up playing three songs and then also. Um, I chose another song that wasn't Usher's song that um, was just a song to kind of show some versatility, you know? Right, um, right, right. You know, so I submitted those songs and, and they checked it out. And out of, you know, I don't know, Valdez, the music director, said it was probably like maybe 100 people or so. Okay. That had submitted. Wow. And, wow. Uh, okay. They, they chose me to be a drummer. Amazing, amazing. So how's your experience been with him? And, you know, somebody also asked, uh, you know, because we had asked a lot of people to send their questions and one of mm -hmm. them asked me, which is your favorite Usher track to play live with him? Oh, man. Uh, 
The, my favorite Usher track to play probably is whatever the last song is of the night, because I know the, the show is over, it's done, it's finished, <laughs> and we can move on to whatever the next city. Um, right. You know, I, I like a lot of Usher songs because they they all have um, had great vibe, you know, great feel, right. and Usher right. always really like he will really let me play. Like he really fed off of the energy and the vibe, you know, Amazing. Like even to this, to this day, when you, you watch him, you know, and, and check him out, like he's always vibing with his, with his band. Cause he just, he loves music, you know? So right. um, that gig was just a lot of fun to play just based off of that. Like just being right. able to, you know, lock in the music, but then also to have room to be expressive or room to be, uh, you know, explosive at times. It was just, it was right. just a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of fun. He gave you that freedom to 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 put your music out and oh, you be yourself much. on stage. Very very much so. And, and you know, it's what's crazy is I feel like um, I don't even know if that. <laughs> I think that that gig kind of helped shape me into you know who I who I am because I feel like before that. Um, right. Uh, oh, Rashawn, what up? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm seeing some of my friends. Okay. In, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that gig helped to kind of shape me into um, the player that I am or the player that, that everyone kind of knows me for. Um, right. I feel like when I got there with them, like with, with Johnny and with um, Valdez, like I felt like they really were pushing me into being – what it is that everyone saw, you know, like I felt right. like um, there were times when we were playing and we were working and, um, you know, I'm playing, you know, what I think is, is great or what right. I think is fantastic. And they were just like, uh, yeah, we're going to try that again. It was okay, okay. But I mean, we needed to be a little bit more, it needs to have more aggression, you know. Aggression, And right. they really told, taught me about, you know, how to really tap into, um, you know, my feelings, you know, really right. tap into being able to, you know, play things, you know, with a, a sensitive approach or to be able to play things, you know, aggressively or to play things, um, you know, just the part, you know, nothing else, right. just – you know, lock into the groove and play the parts, you know, that the, yes. the drum machine would play. You know, they, right. they taught me, you know, so much that helped me to kind of carry on into to what it is that I'm doing now. Amazing. Brilliant. Uh, so let's talk about your journey with uh, Zildjian and, uh, like, tell us about your development uh, of the Zildjian Inspiration Pack that you guys came up with and uh, also your signature mm -hmm. sticks, which uh, just released that now. Oh man, so so oh Harry, what up? Uh, so for me, Zildjian, you know, I played Zildjian, you know, my entire life. You know, even as a kid right. in church, that is that was the symbols that were there. You know, like that okay. Zildjian was just, um, you know, what I always remember. So when I got my right. own drums, um, you know, at home, it had to be Zildjian. That's what I wanted. You know, right. So, um, I don't know. To me, that was just always, always the sound. I, I think there, there were times where I may have kind of flirted around with playing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, which was safety. which was the series that you first bought it? Which, which were your first Zildjian uh, symbols? You know, I, I don't. I'll be honest. With you, <laughs> you know? I I don't even remember because my my parents they su they surprised me with um, my first drum set when I was ten. Okay. Wow. Um, you know, and when, when I got the kit, it was a it was a old Yamaha um was it a Yamaha recording custom. Uh, okay. that had the oak interior and it was yes. the outer um the, the finish was like a chrome. I mean it was it was it was a very unique unique yeah. kit. Um you know, but it was already my parents had already had you know, Zilch and Symbols and everything set up on it. It was, I think K's nice. is pretty much what, what I was playing. Okay. Um, during that, during that time. But, um, yeah, I've, I've always, I've always played Zilch. Like I said, I kind of maybe floated around with, um, 
the Sabian for a second, like when Dave Weckl left Zildjian and went to Sabian and created right. the whole uh, evolution line. I like HHX, those so much, yeah. but uh huh. But I, I like those because they sounded they sounded like Zildjian, you know. They sound mm. like Zildjian symbols to me. So right. um, uh, outside of that and playing like a a Wuhan China, um, I okay. I've never played anything else. You know, it, it's for me. It's always been Zildjian. Yeah. Right, right. And what about the inspiration pack? Did you like? Uh... Did you put together those symbols together, or how did that work with Zildjian? Yeah, we we talked about you know we we had discussed you know basically what is what we felt was needed in you know like in a church like at church there's a certain sound like you you want to be able to have a ride that has um, is crashable, but at the same time right. like the definition and the articulation is extremely important. So oh, yes. we need something to represent that. So we went through a few things mm-hmm. and chose chose that ride. Or we want the crashes to be able to have this sort of spread, you know, not something that right. decays, um, you know, super quick, but something that's going to kind of last for a little bit. Um, we also think that these hats will probably best represent um, the music that's played there. So, I mean, it was a really, really cool thing to be able to – that was my first um, – time actually collaborating with them or something like that like it was really cool okay. for them to be able to come to me to, to um you know just ask me my opinion you know mine and and also others i think they also went to gerald and and uh, okay. gordon and nissan it, they went to a, a a few not nissan i'm sorry um gordon and um teddy they went to a few of us to ask you know our opinion and what we thought and and you know, right. How should this be? And it was really, really cool that they thought enough of us to be able to come to us to ask us our opinion. Right. And what about the sticks? The new sticks which have just come out. Do you want to talk about that? Like, yeah. Uh, um, man, my, my sticks. I'm, I'm very, really excited about them. Um, just because they're they're so different from what I played before. Uh, I don't. A lot of people. I don't know if you guys know that Big Bird and Zildjian actually are. Like um, they're you know brother and sister company they're under yes. the same umbrella, um, so I played Vic for a long time, um, which has been it's been fantastic for me, um, right. but I got a chance to um, kind of make some changes to my stick, and um, rebrand it and put it under the Zildjian umbrella under the Zildjian right. flag. Um, so the stick, you know, I, I gave it. My, I gave it a total overhaul. You know, I made it a little bit more playable. Right. Um, I gave it a little bit of color. I'm yes. trying to make it kind of, kind of fancy. You know, <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm really pleased with it because you know it feels good and it's good to have the feedback that I've been getting from it. You know, a lot of people like it and dig it. And, you know, I'm really, really thankful to be able to make that, that change. Nice. Yeah. Uh, also, a lot of people were asking questions about uh, your setup with different artists when it comes to symbols. Uh, how different it is from, you know, uh, what will you use with somebody like an Ariana, uh, you know, on tour with her and, you know, something else? Like, w- what is the difference in uh, your symbol selection when it comes to different genres of music? Yeah, so I, I just really believe that it's important to make sure that you have the right tools for the job, you know? Yes. Um, so depending on, you know, what the music is, you know, I feel like the symbols that you play should definitely, um, reflect that, you know, so I'm playing a gig like, uh, with Ariana, I want to make sure that the symbols that I have, um, that they're, they're, I I like to have a balance. Like I like to have bright and I also like to have some dark, you know, so I have, um, you know, maybe there's a symbol that they make. Uh, it's a K Custom Fast Crash. Yes. This is probably my favorite symbol right now. Um, okay. It comes in in 18 normally, um, but Zildjian was kind enough to make it for me in a 19. Um, right. So this symbol to me is is perfect because it's it's bright, um, but then also the decay is not one where 
you know, it it doesn't linger forever. Like it's got kind of like the most to me, it has like right. the most perfect spread. You know, so um, this symbol is one that I would use with with art because it's great for symbol swells. Um, it crashes really well, um, and it feels great when I lay into it. Like when I crash into it, like it just right the the wobble or, or the wave of the the symbol just feels feels really good. Yeah. Um, that's important. Um, also, um, your ride selection is important because you want to make sure that um, it, it reflects the music. You know, with with our stuff, there are some songs that may have that we may play that may take on kind of like a depending on the arrangement, it may take right. on kind of like a, a rock vibe. So right. I want to be able to have a ride symbol that I'm able to really crash. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, right. If my my music director is playing, you know, the most amazing rock solo uh, that I've ever heard, I want to be able to be there to support that. You know, yes. so um, it was really important to to lock in and find a symbol that reflected that. Um, I chose. I played a couple of rides. I played um, the Zildjian twentieth uh, anniversary ride. Yeah, uh, the, the brilliant finish. I like that ride a lot because it has great definition. Definitely. Uh, when you're playing, you know, like the the bell, you're playing the shoulder, like it's really right. really a great ride. But then also, um, it crashes really well, you know. So right. I like I like that one a lot. Um, I also was working with Paul on a um like a a, a ride symbol um, that we had kind of been going back and forth. Uh, with I ended up playing that probably for the the second half of the tour. Uh, this okay. ride, this ride is like the bottom was totally um, raw or like you know like unlaid, unlaid, unfinished. Yeah, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then the top, you know, was kind of finished in the pattern of like a, like a K medium ride. You know, so, wow. Okay. So and the the bell. Did also, you uh, use this ride for the Zildjian Live uh, uh, event last year? Like uh, the, the Zildjian Live event? It was, there was there yeah. was a proto a prototype one. I, yeah, I didn't see okay. the name on it. Yeah. So I, that 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 ride was the that ride was the uh, how was it? that was that was like the the mom of this ride because we we started with with that vibe. Okay. And then we kind of took a turn and went into something else. So we okay. ended up we ended up taking that and yeah. creating and making what we made that I ended up playing for the, the rest of the tour. We right. I, I don't know. I, I I'm hoping that it's something that we'll be able to kind of get back into and kind of tweak and kind of make it what it should be. Because I would love to be able to have that out there for everybody to use. Uh, yeah, I, like I would. Symbol. I would love to try out the the Zildjian Live ride that you used. It, it sounded really amazing. Really yeah, amazing. thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, that 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 ride was really. Um, that, that was not even that ride wasn't even my idea. Like that was a ride that came from. Um, one I don't even remember the the gentleman's name. Um, Paul would know. Paul Francis would know. Um, this gentleman, he made, he actually made this ride just kind of messing around and you know, <laughs> okay. he didn't, no one liked it. They thought, it, you know, it was weird. And I was like, man, I, I'd like to kind of mess around with it or, or, or kind of play it if it's cool. And they, they let me get it. Nice. And, um, man, it, it just has such a, a unique, a unique tone and a unique look too, you know, which is really yes, cool. Yes, yes, yes. As we were talking about this, uh, the Zildjian Live thing, uh, you know, there was a mm-hmm. question uh, from someone in Bangalore asking, what is the time signature of the intro, intro section of the song that you played with Spud? Uh, it's, all, it's in four. It, the, the, the whole thing is in four. It's just um, the way that the way that he phrased it. Okay. It makes it sound like it's something, something else, but it's, it's, it's in four. Okay, it's just just different accents, but uh, mm-hmm. it, the time signature is still four four. Yeah, uh huh. Okay, it's, okay. It's it's in four, and it it favors the um. It favors the shuffle groove, you know. So it's like um. Yeah, 
I think once you give us a quarter beat, it's it's still easier to understand. But but without the quarter beat, it like it sounds like it's a different time signature, and you know. Yeah, uh, it's okay. it's it's weird because you know the way that he he, you know, wrote it and the way that he uh, explained to to play it. Right. It totally feels like it's something really really weird, but yes, um, the quarters definitely kind of like bring it all together. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. Uh, so we're just going to take up uh, uh, some questions from uh, some drummers from India who have uh, sent me uh, like a personal message yesterday because everyone was really, really excited. We've got an uh, insane amount of messages on, on the Zildjian India page as well. So I've just selected like a few of them and uh, okay. we can just uh, go through that. So uh, there's this drummer called Kwab from Mumbai who's asking you, how to practice uh, for a like a really tight groove to get a good tight groove and time feel and mm-hmm. how to develop creative musical fills so for me i feel like the best way you know to actually to to practice to develop um you know as far as like like you know your groove and you know working on that sort of thing to me playing music really helps uh, yeah. Playing to music really helps because okay. when you're playing to music, it's like you already kind of have the blueprint of of what's there, and really all you have to do is just kind of lock in and follow this particular blueprint. You know, it's right. like you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. It's like you just you got to drive. You know, so I feel like that is a really really good start to be able to, um, you know, kind of like improve on, you know, like your, your timing and improve right. your groove. I think that that's a really, a really good way. I, for me, that's, that's the way, that's something that really helped me, you know, okay. like when I was coming up, I would play the music constantly. Like that was just the way that I, 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 I love to play. You know, so it was about, you know, putting on different records, you know, whether it was, you know, church records or whether it was, um, you know, like James Brown or whether it was on the fire or it was, uh, you know, mid condition or I mean, it was always just music was always the constant. And it was so cool because, you know, I didn't have access to be, you know, be able to play with like a live band. Right. So this music would serve as my band. It would serve as the training ground for me to be able to play a bunch of different, you know, styles of music. You know, right. it, it helped me to kind of dive into a whole bunch of different things as well, which is really cool. So I would say, you know, start there, man. Start playing to some of your favorite music, you know, okay. your favorite musical artists, you know, stuff that you are comfortable with and stuff that you know. Um, just sit in and really lock in and play the music as if you are playing with that artist on stage. Like nice. that's a really, really good way to kind of get into it, I think. Um, right. And as far as like the feels and the chops and stuff, um, I don't, the best way to approach it, I think, um, I feel like, you want to make sure that the things that you play help to kind of guide the band, you know? Okay. Um, you know, so it's important to, to, to use your feels and your chops to kind of signal where we're going or what we're doing, you know, together right. as a band. You know, right. if you're going from the chorus going into a verse, then you would play something to signify, hey, we're moving right. into, you know, the chorus. Or we're going from um, this last chorus into the outro of the song. Then I want to make sure that we that I'm playing something to signify, hey guys, we're getting ready to, you know, move into the outro. And then outro. At the end of the, you know what I'm saying? So so think about it in that way first. You know, this right. is this is in a, a more musical kind of setting. So the the way that you want to approach that is you want to make sure the things that you're playing um, don't really take away from the groove, right. or take away from the music. Like you want to make right. sure 
that you kind of keep everybody together. I think one of the, the worst things is to be able to, to have the ability to play, you know, the most crazy, uh, you know, incredible, you know, earth shattering, uh, you know, fills and chops uh, and to play them at the wrong time. You know, yeah. you, don't, so you, you, you shouldn't use that as an opportunity to lose everybody in the band. Right. You know, you're going to play something that's just so sick and so wild that you right. just uh, totally lose everybody and, and, you know, you make everyone feel kind of weird and unsure about their place. And that's just, that's not cool. You know, right. so to try to think of, of ways to creatively be expressive, but also to make sure that you're kind of keeping people together. So I think right, that's important. Right. Cool. Uh, as we're talking about films, there was a uh, somebody from Guwahati, Siddharth, who wanted to know how do you use like bass drum effectively in your films? Because uh, you know most of them people use the, like your films, like you know toms and snare drums. But you know we've seen you using some incredible stuff with your foot and like the combination of hand and foot. So uh, any any uh, points on that to work on? Yeah, I mean, so for me, I feel like uh, a lot of the things that I play. Um, feel wise that people are excited about um, you know it's a lot of the linear stuff you know yes so I mean it's just a matter of of taking it's a matter of just t- kind of taking the simple things and kind of expounding on them um, like mm-hmm. like it, let's say like, like just a, a simple one like you know if, if I'm playing uh, like a a six stroke rule, you know, instead yes. of playing, uh, you know, right, left, right, left, right, left, you know, I will play maybe right, left, right, left, kick, kick, you know what I mean? Like, right. I would try to, I would try to kind of take it and put it in, into different places to where my foot would maybe take the place of my hand, you know what I mean? Got it. And then when I play that, maybe I'll, put it on different surfaces to kind of make it to where it has a little bit of magic or a little bit of spice, you know, where it just doesn't sound like it's a normal, regular uh, thing that I'm playing. It sounds like it's something so incredible and so, you know, magical and, you know, amazing. But um, it's really, it's really not. It's really, a lot of things are just super simple. It's just about you know, how they're placed or where they're placed or where yeah. the substitution is, um, you know, for my hands or my feet, you know what I mean? Right. It's just, that's kind of... So when you practice, do you particularly work on this during your practice routine or or, or most, most of the time it's also on stage at that particular moment, you know, with the music, certain times certain things come in or it is, uh, you know, how does it yeah. work? Yeah, so for me now, I feel like these, these things that I'm, that I'm playing, it's really just off the top of my head. Okay. Um, you know, so it happens on stage or it happens um, happens on stage. I, I, I would say there are some times, you know, where I'm practicing where I might come across something. I'm like, oh, I like that. That felt good. Let me really yeah. work on that. Let me work to make sure that this is solid so that way yes. I'll be able to play it effectively on stage. You know what Got I mean? It, um, it just it. really depends on on what it is that I come across. There's cer- certain things where I'm like, man, that that would only work here in the practice room. You know, that right. would only work if I'm if I'm practicing and I'm playing by myself. Like this is not something that I would be able to actually play out on stage with everybody because it's just Got it. it's a drummer thing. You know, it's like yes. this is a thing that my drumming friends would be like, whoa, that was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> crazy. But yeah. not necessarily something that would be able to um, stand up in the music. You know what I mean? True. Got it. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Uh, there's a question from Shravan from Bangalore. Uh, what was the practice routine to build speed and clarity in your initial days? Uh, I'll tell you, man, um, one thing that I, I really used to do a lot uh, and to this day, well, uh, of course not now because of social distancing, but yeah. um, I would spend a lot of time playing and practicing with my friends. You know, we would okay. practice together. We would share it, which was really cool. Yes. Um, 
we would have like a few drum sets set up in the room together and we would we would play and the cool thing about that was <clears throat> the vibe that everyone had it wasn't so much about um you know trying to outdo the next person like that wasn't the vibe at all it was right. really about us coming together to learn from each yes. other and then also coming together to to um like make you know make each other better you know yes. it was really cool because i would see things that a friend would do and i would yeah. take what he played and i would try to to kind of you know play it in my own way or nice. i would see um you know maybe uh it would be a groove or something that someone would introduce that would kind of you know kind of change the vibe of the room but then right. also when it came down to like playing chops or playing licks or uh, growing faster or, you know, just growing, right. that particular room was such a, a a training ground because it was like when you're playing over top of, you know, three or four different, you know, drummers, right. everything you have to play, you know, it, it has to be clean. Got know, it. It has to be it has to speak differently, you know, so okay. I feel like that was a great place for me to be able to kind of grow, um, you know, as far as ideas, to be able to grow as far as, you know, you know, my speed, um, like those places just, they, they just helped me to, to be able to be better. Yeah. So Shravan, the shedding with drummers is very, very important and I with think, good drummers. I think, I think, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, just it yeah. just helps to, you know, it just helps. It makes you. It, it makes you better. You know, to have right. somebody kind of pushing with you, I got think it. It, it. It helps. It helps a lot. Right. Okay. So, uh, one last question. Uh, this is from uh, Roger Menezes from Mumbai. Um, how did you work on like odd time signature and getting like really comfortable with it in your earlier days? Roger, uh, I would say um, for me. What what really helped me a lot is really just doing it. Um, okay. I feel like the more you do it, um, the more you play, um, right. the 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 more it becomes natural. It's just like anything else in life, you know. The more you do something, the the more you become, you know, a master of it. Like right now, I'm sure, like if if I asked you, you know, to take a walk from your your home. Uh, you know, outside and back yeah. in, like you would be able to do that without any problem because this is yeah. something that you've been doing for, you know, for a while. You might even yes. be able to do it with your eyes closed because this is yeah. something that you just have been able you know, every to, day. to do yeah. every day. You're so used to it. You're a master right. at it. Right. You know, so the same thing in playing um, with our time. I feel yeah. like the more that you do it, uh, the better you become at it, you know. Yeah. So one thing that I, I feel like really helped me was um, it, instead of me counting, you know, every single, um, you know, every single quarter note or every eighth note, yeah, okay. uh, what I would like to do is I count the, the halftime, you know. So okay. like if, if I'm playing in seven and it's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I count the halftime. So I'll say one, two, three, and one, two, three, okay. and one, two, three. And because the pulse is still there. But okay. for me, I just feel like it it helps to simplify things to where I'm not focused on every single note. You know, it's like I can kind of kind of groove. And like I said, all the properties are still there, but it's just the way that I choose to address it. It just, it feels better to me. It makes it a little bit, it makes it less complicated. It makes it easier for me. You know? yeah. And that can be applied to every every time signature, every odd time. If it's five, if it's seven, if it's nine, if, whatever. How, however, yeah. however you, you, however far you're trying to go, it's, it, it's, it's there. But yeah, I, I will yeah. say start with that. And then it's just, the more you do it, the, the better you're going to become at it. You know, right. so, just, so is it like muscle play. memory as well? Like a, a lot of muscle memory, especially you just got to give it to your muscles so that they, you know, they they get used to it after a certain time, and it I, becomes much more fluid on 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 the kit and stuff. 
Yeah, I think I think so. I, I feel like, you know, like I said, the more you do it, um, the easier it, it just it just it just becomes part of you. You know, it's just like it. when you sit down to play a groove, you know, if you just playing, you know, just straight two and you know, two and four, you know, yeah. four on the floor and two and four on the snare. It's just you just snap right into it. You just yes. you just used to it's just it's part of you. You know, yeah. so it's the same thing. You play an odd time and you're working on that. It's something that you'll actually, it, it'll become easier the more you do it. Nice. I still remember the, the one uh, uh, thing you played in seven back in Mumbai when you when you mm. were here for the Ziljin event. And yeah, that was just yeah. incredible. <laughs> it was just incredible, man. I appreciate uh, it, man. <laughs> it's crazy. I just saw that the video that you, you sent me of you playing with the, uh, the tabla player, man. That was... Oh it yeah, was, it was so many time signatures floating around there. Right? Was, <laughs> no, so... thank you, man. Thank you. It is. It's basically a concept wherein you got to uh, end before the the one. So it's on mm. four R. Anything that you play, you got to end it on four R. Is four is R. the concept? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So yeah, it, it's fun. It's fun. So uh, I think we're just gonna take a one last message from out here uh, from the people. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. Uh, this is amazing. So many messages. Uh, okay. Man, I gotta say something to my guy, <laughs> Shiva. Oh, yeah. You, bro. Yeah. He's I, good. I, He's I gotta, gonna be back, back next week. I gotta get back there, man, to, to, uh, to India, bro. I, I feel yes. like my time there was so, it was so short. Like, I, I, had, a, I had a good time. I enjoyed it so much, but man, I gotta get back there. Yes, we got to get you some samosas and uh, get back to the Taj Mahal this time. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. brilliant. Okay, so uh, this is the last question: is is if there are a few things you would tell young musicians to keep in mind while they are working hard to see be on the path to greatness, what would they? What would that be? Um, one thing for sure that I would say, man, is is you know, in this during this age and during this time where we have, you know, access to so many different people um, who are posting, you know, just so much content, and, and you see like the the finished product of things that are just fantastic and so great. Um, do not let those things put too much pressure on you. You know, what I'm saying like a lot of times you see those things and you're just like, oh man, I'll never be able to play. Uh, I'll never be able to play like that person or I'll never be able to, to, you know, do the things that they're doing. And you can't let that um, affect your journey. You know, everybody's yes. journey is going to be different. Um, everybody's ability is different. I mean, we are all as unique as our fingerprints. You know what I mean? So the way that you move and the way that you, um, you grow and the way that you, um, you learn, it's, it's going to be different than this this person's, you know. So you don't want to allow the things that you see um, to to put too much weight on you or to negatively affect you. At the end of the day, you know, we're playing. We're having fun, you know. Fun. So you want to really focus on that. You want to focus on uh, enjoying what it is that you do. Now, I'm not saying don't pay attention to those things. I'm not saying don't pay attention to what people are playing or what they're doing because it's a wave and I feel like it's important to to be aware and to be able to see what people are doing and what they're playing or creatively, you know, because I feel like those things may help to spark something in you. But yes. I'm saying do not let those things um, that you see, don't let them affect you to the point where it's like, uh, you know, you Ne don't don't let it affect you negatively. Don't put too much pressure on yourself in order to be great. You know, it's 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 coming. Just stay focused, have fun, be inspired. Um, you know, move that way. You know, don't don't let those things that you see really. It's just it's crazy to see like like people are so um, like they see these things and and just. You know, they don't realize that what you're watching is a video that someone, you know, took, you know, hours and hours to be able to, to get put that. together. You know, like so a, a one minute Instagram yeah. video, like they played this particular thing, you know, 20 times, 
you know what I'm saying, or 50 right. times, you know, or they, they got the lighting just right, or they tweak the sound, you know, so it's like, you see these things that last for one minute, but you don't know what all went into it, and you are so basing true. your whole musical um, existence based on what it is that you see in this one minute clip. Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like just wow. take from it what it is that it is, you know, these great conversations, but use that as inspiration and not to measure yourself. You know what I'm saying? Amazing. Yeah, you gotta have this fun, is, man. This is beautiful. This is like, I think the best advice, uh, I think uh, the youngsters and the upcoming drummers can take. This is uh, perfect, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron. This has been my pleasure, such man. a pleasure, man. Such a pleasure. A big thank you from myself and Ziljin India for being a part of this. And we really hope to see you back in Mumbai soon. And uh, oh, stay safe. And <laughs> yes, we're going to speak to uh, Kim and Sarah. And we'll see that you, you're going to be back soon, hopefully, next year. Let's see. For sure, stay man. safe, Appreciate you know. Stay safe. Appreciate you, Thank man. you so much. Thank you, guys. You all be safe, all right? Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. All right. Take Thank care. You, Yes, guys. So that was uh, the one and only Aaron Spears. Uh, thank you so much once again for joining in on the Ziljin Talk with Darshan Doshi. And uh, I'm going to be back next week, Saturday, with a new guest. And uh, we're going to get to know more about them. And uh, as Aaron said, just be focused. Uh, you know, uh, don't uh, don't think about the other things which are happening around you. As you, as he said, YouTube and other things are are good, but you know you need to use it in a in a positive way. So work on that and. Uh, have a good week and I will see you next week with a new guest. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.